Blame and shame. Canada, the culprit. The country everyone at Durban loved to point out for its heinous carbon crimes. Dropkicking Kyoto ugly and reversing feckless liberal leadership has saved Canada billions of dollars in handouts, detaching us from the hypocritical politics that villainizes Canada while fawning over polluted China, all with a faulty foundation based on the junk science of global warming. And Canada's biased mainstream media joined in with the chorus of boos. Under heavy criticism for its refusal to back the Kyoto Accord. Here's the reaction of Canada pulling out of the Kyoto Protocol. Regrettable to reckless to an act of sabotage. Uh, just some of the reaction to the federal government's decision to pull out of the protocol on climate change. We're hearing it here in Canada and overseas. Aubrey just said that Canada is now going to be looked upon as an international pariah because of pulling out of, this, uh, of the Kyoto Accord. Instead of feeling guilt for those fabricated climate crimes, we should take pride in our petroleum to give our support for this vital cog in our economic engine that will actually continue to provide vital jobs. It's the global warming cultists and their compromised ethics who should be feeling shame for their reckless doomsday scenarios. And for much more on that, let's turn to Donna Laframboise, author of The Delinquent Teenager. Hi, Donna. Hello. Donna, to hear the mainstream media tell it, it's as if uh, Canada had flown airplanes into buildings and, and murdered people. What, what is, what's going on? Well, I think the mainstream media uh, spends a lot of time listening to activists, and activists um, are interested in Kyoto even though it's been a failure. It's been a failure for 20 years, and very serious people on both sides of the climate debate um, know that. The problem with activists is they don't like to admit they've made a mistake. And so when the media only speaks to those people, rather than, than the serious, sober-minded people who are saying more of the same is not the answer, then we get this, this um, very biased and um, very problematic media coverage. All right. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you think the media has actually researched uh, Kyoto or, uh, or is the, the, the talking point uh, summary that comes from the activists Greenpeace and the others, is that just kind of good enough? I think that's good enough. And it, and it's, 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 um, it does not um, look, um, you know, it doesn't make the media look good. And, you know, for example, um, one of the voices that I think is, is quite remarkable on Kyoto and who has been saying things for a while is there's a gentleman in the States named Walter Russell Mead. And he's a Democrat. He voted for Obama. But he has been saying that the Kyoto Protocol is foolish. He says it's stupid. He says when 95 senators voted unanimously to reject Kyoto, it was one of the few times in history when those 95 senators were all, um, were all correct. And, you know, he has a marvelous essay online, and you can find it if you just type in Tiny Earl, T-I-N-Y-U-R-L dot com slash Kyoto fraud. It will just open your eyes about the Kyoto Protocol. It's not the usual thing we hear in the media. It's very serious analysis, and it just says that Kyoto is a failure. It's foolish. And more of the same is not the answer. And the green movement needs to grow up and the media needs to grow up when it talks about things like Kyoto. Just Google Can it, Kyoto fraud revealed. It's in my, my hot hands here, Donald Lefram was. Walter Russell Mead, M-E-A-D, his name. Now, uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, the Europeans and what the Europeans have actually done? Because they are some, somehow seen as as heroes, and they're among those who want to constantly condescend to can on this. Uh, Walter Mead writes eloquently about how the Europeans have outsourced uh, the issue. Yes, they have. You know, they, they say, oh, we, we've reduced our carbon emissions. Well, how did they do that? They did that by shipping jobs to China. So when you look at how much um, carbon emissions are associated with what the Europeans consume, you find out that there's not been a drop. Actually, there's been rather a steep rise. So, um, you know, sending jobs to China may make sense to the Europeans. I don't think it makes sense to, to most of us. You know, one of the reasons that the United States did not um, participate, in, par participate in Kyoto is because the estimates were that it would kill 5 million U.S. jobs. That's not very sensible.
All right, so just to be clear about this, because often uh, if you strip away ideological talking points and just follow the money and follow the arithmetic, uh, we're all better off, at least th those of us who believe in, in reason over ideology. Uh, the Europeans are producing less, right? They're emitting less. But what they've done is decided to consume the things they were producing in Europe. They're now being produced in Asia, so they're, they're, they're filling the skies full of carbon in that part of the planet. The Europeans are purchasing it, so the Europeans are still participating, they're just not emitting. So, so mathematically, there is no difference. No, in fact, carbon emissions have gone up everywhere. Kyoto is a nice idea, but it didn't work. Even the countries who tried very, very hard could not reduce their emissions. When you keep doing things that aren't possible, when you keep trying to do things that aren't possible, that's, that's not sensible. It's time to say this approach doesn't work. If we're concerned about decarbonizing, then let's try something else now. Now, the, the Chinese uh, emitters, uh, they're emitting at a 250% rate, 250% uh, in terms of increase over the last 20 years. <laughs> That's rather high, uh, especially when you compare it to the Canadian number, 20%. We're emitting 20% more. The Chinese, 250% more. They're lecturing us. That's right. I don't get the math. I just don't get the math. Exactly. And, you know, we, we all know that the environmental standards in China are, are, are much lower. So not only have we outsourced jobs, not only have emissions risen, but th there's probably more pollution now in the world because th that all of that manufacturing is, is, is going on in China. It makes no sense. And yet the activists just seem more, they want more of the same. It, you know, it's not a sensible position. I think I, I'm very proud to be a Canadian right now because we have we have stood up and been honest about the fact that Kyoto is not working, and I think that's the kind of leadership that that I'm I feel very proud of. Yes, we've stripped the veil of political correctness and been honest, and I guess that's what's shocking the hell out of the Canadian main, mainstream media. That's not <laughs> that's not very Canadian. That's not supposed to happen, especially uh, at overseas conferences. Donald Lafram was author of The Delinquent Teenager. Thank you so much. Thank you.